Hello everyone, Dr. Mac here with another video today. Hope you all had a nice Christmas and uh, enjoying the holidays, whoever are having holidays. Today's video, I want to teach you all a very, very important lesson. I think this is the most important lesson I can teach anyone, whoever is doing the part two ADC journey. Do not fall into the social media trap. And when I was doing my ADC exam on your time, we do get fascinated. We all do get really, really fascinated when we see some work from social media, someone posting it up for Facebook, their work, and we're like, oh my God, how amazing that work is. I hope I can produce work like that. So the couple of points I need you to understand, that's why I've showed my work, because it's really unfair to show someone else's work and comment on it. So I thought I'll show my work, some of the work I post on my Instagram and stuff. Now, one thing, the first thing you need to understand is, and you have to ask the question to yourself and ask question to others as well. Do you actually need such amazing work to pass the ADC exam? That's number one. I'll answer that question for you all. The answer is no. I always and again and again talk about the grading criteria. What I always teach everyone is you have to stay safe in the grading criteria, in the satisfactory borderline zone, make sure you're safe, you produce work that fits more than the grading criteria. I don't care how it looks and there's a very good chance you'll pass the exam. That's why I have to explain this concept to everyone because I keep on doing assessments and I keep on seeing work from people who are actually trying to impress others. I created three rules when I was doing my ADC exam and I passed it and after teaching so many candidates, I created three rules. I will be posting it in another video. I want you to watch those three rules if you want to crack your ADC exam, because that really, really mimics exactly what I want you, you to, all to understand. So number one is, do you really need such fancy work to pass? The answer is no. Something that fits in the grading criteria, average good work is all you need. You don't need extraordinary work. That's number one. Now, why I keep saying do not fall into the social media trap? What's the problem? Like if someone says, if I can produce a fancy work, what's the problem? What's the problem of producing work like this that I'm showing you? The problem is when you try to produce such close work, that goes very close to ideal. Now, the problem with getting close to ideal is it impresses a lot of people on Instagram but you're not here to impress anybody. You're here to pass the exam. When you try to produce such work, and even there's a tiny bit mistake, the problem with ideal is you land straight into unsatisfactory. You do not go to satisfactory. The, pro the good thing with trying satisfactory is, if you have a tiny bit of a mistake, you go to borderline. Or if you try to correct your work a bit better from borderline, you go up to satisfactory. But when we try to go really close to ideal, and if you really understand the grading criteria, how it works, a small mistake, you go and land in unsatisfactory and you fail the whole task. So that's why we need to ask that question. Do we need to produce excellent work? Are we here to impress anybody? No, you're not. We just here to pass the exam. So I want you to focus on the grading criteria first. So if you close your eyes and see what you see the basics, yeah, in your mind. The basic principle that whenever you do any prep, either a restorative task or a preparation task, and then you see what are the main things that you have to see and work and follow. If you work with that, there's a good chance you pass. Now, what do we do is we see such fancy work and the entire time we are trying to produce a very, very beautiful work. 
And what happens? I'll show you exactly what happens. So again, I cannot tell you who sent me this work and stuff, but I'll just give you a bit of an idea. Okay. Now look at this crown prep. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah. Beautifully done crown prep. Look how round the margins are. Nicely done, nicely done palatal. I literally can see the whole margin outline there. Beautifully done. There's not even a minor sort of roughness around it. Whoever's done has done such an amazing job. But what's the problem here? Because this is a straight fail. This is unsatisfactory. Let's look at one more. Look at this work. See how beautiful this crown prep is. Like, look at the margin. Look at the symmetry. Look at how nicely they have merged in. No sharp line angle at all. Beautifully done. But this is unsatisfactory. Again, let me show you one more. Look at this one. How nicely done crown prep this is unsatisfactory again look at this beautifully done palatal nicely done canine nice margins look at the cingulum the symmetry they have created beautifully done palatal there's no sharp angles nicely done again a straight fail if you do something like that you are straight fail let's go to unsatisfactory not even borderline Look at one more. I think it's the same tooth. See how nicely they've done it. Beautifully done. Straight fail. What's the problem there? Pause the video. I, I want you to pause the video and try to think what's the problem there? Like it's such a nicely done work. Now, when we talk about crown preps, the most important thing is Avoiding major errors, right? That's what I always keep explaining. In this one, I always say whenever I do a crown prep, look at four corners. So these four corners we have to see, which are most of the time either under prep or over reduced. So say about if this is distal, I'm talking about distal lingual, mesolingual, distal buckle, Mesio buckle. Now, if you see these mesio buckle, distal buckle, do you think they are 1.2 millimeters? What's the satisfactory range? The margin, if I talk about margin width, you can go from 1.2 to 1.5. From the reduction, you can go from 1.2 to 1.8. Now, because you wanted to produce such nice contour of the tooth, you wanted to look fancy, you forgot that if I leave it to 1.2, it may look amazing, but how about, because I was working on the tooth for one hour, I missed that maybe one point was less than 1.2. What happens? You fail the task. So then this is the point I want you all to understand is majority of the time what the work you see, which is really fancy on social media, it's good for Instagram. Yeah, you might get a lot of likes. It's good for your Facebook. It's good for teaching purposes. It's good if it's a ceramic prep, but this is a PFN prep. Your margin is 1.2 to 1.5. Are you here to impress the examiner or you want a 100% pass? You want a 100% pass. So if it's 1.2 to 1.5 the range, why do you want to stick it with 1.2? You go a bit higher to 1.3 to 1.4. Stay in the middle, stay in the safer criteria. At the end, it does not matter how good it looks. Yeah? Does it matter how good it looks? It should be in the safer criteria. And when closely assessing that works, this is less than 1.2. This corner is less than 1.2, which is again, I'm saying the four corners. So you fail the task there. Look at another work, this crown prep. 
See from the side how fancy was it looking? Now look at this crown prep. How much do you think is a buckle reduction? This is buckle by the way. Do you think this is 1.2? I don't. It's a beautifully done crown prep. Whoever has done it has an amazing handwork, hand skill, I must say, because not everybody can produce a beautiful hand skill like that. But is it a pass? No, it's not a pass, it's a fail. So it's very, very important to understand these things when you're doing. Look at this. Same crown prep, beautifully done. But there's no taper, hardly any taper. Very minor taper. How much taper do you need? What's the ideal? Ideal is 12. How much do you need in the satisfactory? You need somewhere between 6 to 1820. What's the range from 6 to 1820? And how much do you have got? Less than 6. Maybe close to four, but you fail from there. So things from like that, that's why it's very important. Now look at this. Someone sent me this and they said, I've done a beautiful endo, nicely done endo. What's the problem there? There's a roof present. Straight fail. So no matter how good was done, you can post it on Instagram. You might get a lot of likes, but there's a roof present. I cannot pass you, sorry. Same way, look at this provisional, look at the contacts, nicely done. Nicely done, but I'm not sure if you can see this here or not. Tooth restriction junction, there's a one millimeter space. Can you pass this task? No. So what I'm trying to teach you all today is try to avoid the social media trap. When we see such work, after you pass your exam, you can impress the whole world. You can do as good work as you want. I'm not limiting you to do bad work, no. But what I mean to say today, and I want you to really understand is whenever you do a task, do not worry about how it looks first. You should worry about if it's functionally good, if it's optimal reduction has been done. If you actually have a contact, if your marginal ridge is intact, if your tooth restoration junction is clean. Let's talk about provisional. If your contact's there, if your tooth restoration junction is there, if your tooth restoration junction, your probe is completely stopping, not, forget about probe stopping, there's a big gap there, do you actually think you can pass the task? Same if you talk about endo, beautifully done endo. Same crown prep, nicely done crown prep. Reduction is less than 1.2. So what are you doing here? You're again and again falling into the social media trap. And let me tell you one thing from my experience. Whenever you try to produce a beautiful work, majority of the time you are ending up with some sort of error. So every time if your tooth looks really, really good, just make sure, check your measurements. If you have done optimal reduction or not. Yes, you've done a beautiful class two. Let me see if I can open this picture. You've done a beautiful class two. But do you actually have a contact or not? If you have a bit of an excess there or not? Is the marginal ridge okay? Is enough width of the marginal ridge? What's the cusp positioning? What's the cusp height? Once you're satisfied, then you can see how it looks. That's okay. But if you actually try to impress people and say, my work doesn't look that great, you might end up going somewhere which you shouldn't be. So very important lesson that I want you all to learn today. Put it in your head. You're not here to impress anyone. Make sure your work is fitting in the grading criteria first, then on Instagram or Facebook. Half of the people fail the exam with amazing hand skills because they again and again do the same mistake. They're again worried how my tooth looks. 
if your tooth looks ordinary and average but it fits in the grading criteria trust me there's a light great higher likelihood you're going to end up smashing and passing the exam than someone who's producing so good result and going so close to ideal that they end up failing so please understand this please understand this and do not forget to watch my next video which is all about the three laws or the three ru rules that you should never forget whenever you're attempting the ADC exam. All right, everyone, Dr. Max signing off. Hope you understand this lesson and you get this in your head and you follow it properly. Watch the video and we'll see you all with the next video very soon. Dr. Max signing off. God bless you all.